Hi, everyone. This is Jason. Welcome back to the show. Joining me today is Elsa Ramon. She is a two-time Emmy-winning journalist with over two decades in the business. She recently began covering the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. You can find Elsa on Twitter, Elsa Ramon on Air, and her website is adventuresandcrypto.tv. Elsa, thank you for joining me today. Welcome to the show. Jason, thank you for having me. I'm honored that you asked. Like I said, and I'll, I'll admit it to the audience, I'm fanboying out right now because I, anytime I get to talk to to journalists and people who have been in the news business for a long time, that that's that means a lot to me. So I uh, really appreciate you uh, stopping by and and letting me ask you a few questions. So thank you again. So happy to help. Um, I wanted to ask first. Um, this is a question that I typically ask um, all my guests: Is how did you discover cryptocurrency? <laughs> Well, um, I guess, you know, everybody has that aha moment, right? That moment that this industry clicks for them. And uh, long story short, the person who ended up becoming my investor was holding up a panel, just an informational panel for anyone who wanted to come to this event and ask questions about crypto and, and blockchain and digital currencies. And he had uh, on the panel like programmers himself, he's a total IT guy, uh, you know, developers, he had a crypto tax attorney that was on the panel too, which is also helpful, <laughs> uh, a crypto lawyer, um, you know, we, and we could ask anything we wanted. Well, he knew me from watching local news and we met each other through a mutual friend and, and he asked if I could kind of moderate this panel. Mm. And I said, sure, you know, I didn't know anything about cryptocurrency or anything about the space except for Bitcoin. I knew what Bitcoin was and that was it. Right. That's all I knew, it was a cryptocurrency. So I was there the whole night for this panel and by the end of the, of the night and the end of the Q&A and, and the panel, I was just like, do, do you guys understand what this stuff is? You, you know, I'm looking around the room like, did, did everybody not get this? I mean, <laughs> this is incredible stuff. I, I would never have gone to this if I wasn't asked to actually work it, right? So from that moment on, I, that was my aha moment. That was in February of 2018. Nice. And I've never looked back since. Uh, I was still working at CBS and I immediately just dove headfirst into researching what all this is, what does it mean, how does it work? And my investor, of course, super smart guy, just a genuine person had spent hours with me explaining things and teaching me how to uh, buy crypto on exchanges and what digital wallets were, you know, the basics. He spent so much time teaching me that stuff. And over the months that I was really just like eating this all up, we came up with the idea of, well, maybe we should put together a show or some content to help people understand what this is not the technical stuff and what hash rate is and you know uh stock stuff type talk of right. volume and you know that kind of thing because the money yeah because i you know that's really it's, it's i understand how difficult that is to grasp being a, a, a english and comparative literature major from uc irvine i never would have thought i'd find myself in this space i I'm not that type of person right. and I just, I couldn't get enough. So that's, that's when it all started for me. And after he committed to funding the efforts of me and our crew uh, to create the content and help spread the word and every way we can, I started plotting my escape. <laughs> <laughs> and you went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I started plotting my escape from CBS to completely have this change in my life completely from everything I knew for the last 21 years. Right. Something brand new. Which is well, <laughs> well, let me ask you about that because you spent 22 years on network television and how is that different between that and what you're doing now? Like, uh, I'm sure it's more guerrilla style where it's just taking your camera and just filming compared to before, but is it real? Is it that much different? Um, it's different in that 
we're in total control. Mm. I don't work for someone now. I work for me and my partner uh, who's in on this with me, plus my investor and another investor. We, we have two investors. It's okay. for who our uh, own Adventures in Crypto LLC. And uh, so we work for us. Mm -hmm. The first time in my life I've never worked for someone or some entity or network. Uh, I've never done this before. So uh, that's the huge difference. Because when you work in news the way I did, um, you're on call, on, it's, you're on unspoken call 24 seven, mm -hmm. right? If something big happens, you're expected to come in. And I get that, that's, that's it, you've gotta commit to that. You know, I've been working in newsrooms when we had the uh, uh, the shuttle crash over Texas. That was I hadn't I that was my first day on the air there. I just got oh, the job. Wow. Um, 9/11. I was working in Phoenix, and we had to come in, and we were on the air just 24 hours. It's it's things like that that you have to be ready for all the time, and you're constantly owned by the news cycle. Right. And so it's really hard to have some balance in your personal life because everything just stacks up. Because if I'm being honest, when you work for news and network news, your news is bitch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to put it. And, you know, Can and, we hashtag that? <laughs> and for 21 years, I loved it. It, it was, you know, and, and I've been raising kids and I'm a single mom and it's, you know, I've been fortunate, very fortunate in my career to have good success, to be able to take care of my family, but it's extremely demanding. And mm -hmm. I like now that all the energy and effort that I'm putting into doing something that I love, because I do love that. I love getting the story. I love going out there. I love talking to people and meeting people and connecting with people and just finding out these great stories that are out there. But now it's on my terms. <laughs> nice. and that's the first time in my life. Nice, nice. Um, so for someone who wants to get into the business, well, even, even I mean, you have, even crypto journalism is, is the term I like to use because you're, you're in a specific environment once you get to crypto. Um, what do you think is, is something, what advice would you give someone who's just starting out in, in journalism, especially in this space? What, what do you think someone should, should consider first before getting started? Uh, well, consider that uh, you really need to give your heart and soul. So if you're not wanting this a thousand percent and willing to work nights, weekends, ready to chase after that news and and find stories and meet people if you're not willing to put yourself out there don't do this and this is with any profession right don't go for something because of the money at the time i didn't even really know what newscasters made i mean i knew that when i was 11 years old this is what i wanted to do i didn't know anything about the money involved with it so um I would just recommend you make sure you got that passion because when you're a thousand percent invested in it, heart, mind, body, soul, you will do it. You will do what it takes. You'll work those days to, to climb and learn and be better. Right. Well, and that was where I had my wake up call when I first started this That's also because, you know, it's one thing to just write on your own blog, your own website, but when you're writing for someone else and you're producing content, there's deadlines to consider, there's a copy to consider. You have to think that, okay, um, I'm presenting this to a specific audience, so I have to tailor it to that audience based on the company that I work for. And, and you know, it, it, took some, some, uh, it took some adjusting, but I can happily say I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Look, we're sitting here now, you're doing it. You have a YouTube channel. You're doing all the things that you want to do to build yourself and your brand and what you have a passion for. Right. That's all you need. You need right. to build your mind, body, and soul that this is what you want to do. Right. And and you're 100% right. If you, you can't, you, 
you can't half step when it comes to putting yourself out there and creating content. You know, it's, it's your reputation becomes a part of how you interact with people and how well your content um, um, gets dis disseminated by everybody, you know. Um, let me, okay, so I wanted to ask you this because I saw on your website that you, or on your YouTube channel that you interviewed John McAfee. So <laughs> how, how was that? <laughs> it was, it was terrific. You know, I, I, maybe people might be surprised by this and if they go to the website, they'll see that I've written a blog about my experience with with John and his wife, Janice, who are super cool people. Um, he's extremely eccentric. I think he is so beyond any level that people may think they are he, in, in terms of intelligence and smarts and creativity. He's just out of this world that smart. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, uh, because he's that way, I would imagine that people like him who are just unbelievably brilliant are also, they get very bored easily and they do very eccentric, crazy things, or at least that would seem to a lot of people. But uh, I have to say that all in all, John is extremely cordial. He was an absolute gentleman. Mm. And, you know, I was in his house and I respected that. And I think he respected that I, I, I just let him be him. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I didn't try to define who he was or, uh, you know, listen to everything that's been put out there about him. Cause there's all kinds of crazy stuff yeah. as you yeah. know, that's been said about him. And I kind of think he takes that whole, uh, approach that there's no such thing as bad press <laughs> right. because for him he's so confident and he's so intelligent and he's so bright he's really kind of impervious to a lot of the bs right. <laughs> uh, out there so uh, he's just on another level and that time was so enjoyable for us for me and our crew we had a, a for that shoot we had like five or six crew members on that shoot and <laughs> that was the coolest shoot ever figure nice. literally because you know you saw that he took me out on his boat yeah and guns <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it, it's pretty wild i mean just the the stories in general about well you know what it and like you said people at that level of intelligence you know they they they're eccentric Right, I guess that's the word that we'll use. Um, have is have there been any other interviews that you've done recently that have stood out to you that were really like thought provoking? I really have been lucky to interview some really cool people in this space. Uh, gosh, I'm I'm trying to think of all the people. I mean, there there's John McAfee, and then you know everyone else has their place too. Uh, but not everyone has to be a showman like him to, to make an impact that he sure. makes an impact in the way he does. Um, but I've certainly in, uh, enjoyed interviewing uh, Travis Wright and Joel Com with the bad crypto podcast. Right. These guys, I really feel like come across and they are just everyday dudes. And I think that's what makes them so inviting to people to want to listen to their podcast because they, they break things down and they're not trying to make people feel stupid. And that's the biggest thing for me to come away with in putting together all contents or interviews or whatever. I want people to know that I'm learning too. I, I don't, I've scratched the surface and it's been a year and a half and Boy, I mean, I you, we know we can go on our whole lives and not know everything there is to know about this particular space. Yeah, that's true. Of this, just like everybody else, and the last thing I'd want anyone to feel is stupid because they're being pressured to feel like they need to know coding and and like I said earlier, 
what hash rate means and all this other stuff means, ultimately I feel in the end, that's not going to matter when it's making a difference in our lives. I've always felt like, you know, look at it this way, when, when the airplane was being invented and the car was being invented, did everybody who saw what those things could do not deserve to fly in an airplane or right. drive a car just because they didn't know the particular ins and outs of the engineering that went into it, you know, about what makes an airplane fly and what makes a car drive other than putting gas in it. <laughs> oil. I mean, that's, you know, and I don't, I, to me, that's really important that the end message of all of this stuff about blockchain and uh, distributed ledger technology and cryptocurrency and digital currency and the difference between all that. In the end, it's going to be a car and the car is gonna get you from A to B and it's gonna make your life better because you don't have to walk and you don't have to ride a bike and you could go grocery shopping and get to a job and take your family around. I feel like these things that are being created in this space are going to help us in, all these ways we never thought, you know, that were not imaginable. And none of that stuff is going to matter. I praise the people who are so brilliant, who are putting this stuff together that, are, that you know, are ultimately going to be responsible for making our lives so much better, our, our, our financial situations better, or the way we live more streamlined, all these things that this technology is going to do. We have these really bright people right now who are, arguing about these things, about the technology and all that, in the echo chambers, we have these people to thank forever uh, for making our lives better. But ultimately, I feel like I want people to understand that I'm learning too. And in the end, this is going to be something that's going to benefit all of us. Right. That's a great point. Um, and I try to keep my content at the same, with the same mindset. Um, it, I, my content is more geared towards people who are just getting into the space. That's why I like doing these interviews so that people who stumble up upon this stuff can, can see, okay, he's, um, this, these people are working on this project and this project does that. And maybe I should listen to this person and maybe, you know, things like that, as opposed to talking to the people who already know a lot about this. I was like, like, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm not gearing this to a uh, Vitalik right? <laughs> you know, so I'm gearing it towards, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the lame, the layman. Yeah. Uh, the everyday people. Everyday who people, right. Bills and have families to take care of and, uh, you know, either own their businesses or go to work, whatever they choose. These, you know, I, if somebody asked me and said, you have to learn all this stuff, about everything that led up to blockchain before you deserve to get to use it and benefit from it. Right. <laughs> well, see you later. Thanks. Right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, exactly. If you know, it's but sometimes, uh, especially on social media, it gets it gets like that sometimes where um, you know, it, it feels like a click, you know, and that's why sometimes they call it uh, crypto Twitter dumpster fire is you know, it's like well if this is how we're going to behave you know um, but thankfully there are people like yourself who are actually trying to bring people in instead of you know and and that that's what I try to do I mean I I I don't speak negatively to people on social media you know uh, and I don't but there was one reason why I don't talk politics or religion. You know, it's like, well, those are two, that's two easy ways to get into an argument with somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll be like, over here with my Bitcoin. <laughs> no, I though I feel like I, I hear you about crypto Twitter. There's a, there's a lot of stuff on there that's people who do things for the shock value. And, you know, there are a lot of other people who shill things and then there are scammers. Mm. It's like anything else you know you have to kind of filter out and decide for yourselves uh, you know what what you find credible and what maybe is just kind of entertaining to watch from the sidelines right and, um, yeah yeah what I say for for people who want to kind of gauge for themselves 
I think crypto, uh, uh, Twitter, crypto, or crypto Twitter rather, um, really helped me start meeting the right people and making good connections because we had direct access to each oh, other. Yeah, definitely. The more I kind of put myself out there, the more people kind of slowly approach me who are already in the space and then we make contact. And so uh, crypto Twitter has been extremely valuable to me. You know, I kept just watch the noise from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. But I'm also finding too, I was never a big user of LinkedIn because I never had to be uh, in my career. That's just not how you go from job to job and the television news business. I've had an agent for the last 22 years and they're the ones that foster the develop, uh, develop the relationships with managers and they're the ones that connect you and get you the job. So it's really not done that way on LinkedIn. But I've discovered that the last couple of months after starting to develop and grow my LinkedIn, um, that there are a lot of very serious people about crypto mm. and space on LinkedIn. Definitely. So that a lot of the noise is filtered out there where you have more serious people who are serious about connecting and developing and you know, fostering all kinds of ideas and stuff like that without some of the noise. Maybe that'll change after a couple of years, maybe more, you know, we'll get more of it on there. But I'm finding that there on LinkedIn, you're getting much more focused people in that space or in any uh, industry. Yeah, definitely. Well, the one thing that social media in general has benefited me is uh, it allows me to know what's going on, um, like the meetups and the conventions and the things like that. And then you get to, you, you do build relationships through social media. Like I have, like her name is a crypto NDO. She's a Los Angeles, uh, and we've become great friends in real life and uh, Naomi Brockwell. And these are people that I met on Twitter that became friends in real life. Same, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, Wendy, uh, we connected on social media and we've talked to each other on social media. And I mean, that's how I, I met her through, through Twitter. And uh, Naomi Brockwell, I met her at Consensus. And again, you know, it was exposure to each other from Twitter. So it's extremely helpful if you're willing to use that, uh, that uh, uh, social media platform as a tool to help you connect. Use it as social. <laughs> Focus on the social part. Focus on the social part, people. <laughs> well, Elsa, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show um, and joining me today. Uh, once again, I truly appreciate you. And guys, we're going to uh, link all of uh, Elsa's socials in the description below. I want you to follow her. I want you to subscribe to her channel. I want you to share out her material. She's doing great work, and she's going to help us a lot. So once again, Elsa, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And you're going to help too a lot. Thank you for the opportunity.